Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author in one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Lorraine Beato on the line, and uh, she is author of Flip the Switch from Real Estate Agent to Real Estate Investor, and she's also um, founder over at Atlanta's Residences with EXP Realty. Lorraine, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. All right, Lorraine, so uh, excited to get into today's topic, so we'll talk about your book, um, Flip the Switch from Real Estate Agent to Real Estate Investor, and uh, I guess, first thing first, I mean, what prompted you to write this book? Um, Actually, it was a couple of conversations that I had had over the last few years with uh, real estate agents, and then one in particular with a very good close friend of mine who we were just chit-chatting, and she's like, girl... I'm going to have to sell houses until I'm 70. And um, I said, why? She goes, well, you know, I'm going to be 60 soon. And um, she said, I have no retirement. And so we we had a conversation. I'm like, how do you not have any retirement? You're like a multi-million dollar producer. And granted, she was a solo agent, but she has made great money. And it double shocked me because she originally came from the corporate world, as I did. And... Um, that that was the major push. I think uh, probably about three months later, I sat down and, and started writing the book and said, someone has to be out there um, empowering agents and telling them that they should uh, invest in the product that they sell every day. So what, um, I mean, what prompted, because this is a little bit, this is a little bit different. So I've seen a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of books. On, uh, on, you know, how to, how to sell real estate, how to be a successful agent. But I just think your angle, I want to spend a little bit more time on that. Like, your angle is completely unique. So you're telling, you're telling real estate agents, hey, you need to start investing in, in what you're selling because if you don't, you know, and, and like, and like, there's no reason not to. And I've seen this happen many times, especially in markets like LA. And I mean, it doesn't have to be just a market like LA or New York, but you see exactly what you said. And you're like, man, even if you'd started, you know, even selling houses or doing this for you know 20 years or however many years it's like the market has gone up this whole time like uh, for some of these markets by the way obviously not Mm -hmm. now um um, so it's like wow if you would have just done this or if i just would have done that like like what do you think holds people back from doing that or what what do you think holds agents back from doing that because they obviously know the market they know their business and they know the product because that's what they're doing day in and day out like what holds people back I think that they, first of all, no one's ever told them to think that way. That's why my book mm. flipped the switch. And I'm in Atlanta. I'm in the metro Atlanta market. And I have been a speaker at several boot camps. And what some of the boot camps started doing maybe around two years ago was, oh, if you're a real estate agent, come learn how to work with investors. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, no, you need to learn to become the investor and so I, I ran some stats when, when I, you know, when I wrote my book. And at this point, the data is probably two years old. But in Atlanta, the average real estate investor made $123,000 a year, whereas the average real estate agent made $44,000 a year. And so I, I don't think agents think about that. And that's kind of what pushed me, right? Everybody thinks I was an investor that became an agent. And I've actually been licensed for 30 years. I didn't always sell, 
but it was because I was making out-of-state investors a lot of money in the Atlanta market 2014, 2015, 2016, and I saw what their checks were compared to my commission check. And I literally came home and I told my husband, I said, we, we need to be doing this. Okay, that's number one. That's the main, that's the main reason. The other thing is, I think most real estate agents, because I see this a lot, they're like, oh, I need a lot of money as a down payment, right? Or I don't have the extra money because you need more of a down payment on an investment property. And I have uh, one, two, I have three properties at this point that I have acquired with no money out of my pocket that came to me because I was a real estate agent. And what real estate agents need to think about, they need to stop thinking about it's just about the money. It's not. We're problem solvers. And all three of those cases, putting a sign in the yard was not the best option for the seller. I just closed on a rental two and a half weeks ago. This was someone that came to me four years ago wanting to sell her two rental properties. And at the time, I told her, I said, you're upside down. Even if I put it on the market for you, you're coming to the table with 30 grand. I said, one was vacant. The other one, I said, it's cash flowing. Leave it alone. If you have a great tenant and she's not bothering you and you're making money, now's not the time to put it on the market. She came to me last January. Oh, yeah. And I talked to her here and there. This isn't someone that I, I talk to all the time. I talk to her twice a year. And she called me up and she said, hey, Lorraine, do you remember those two properties? And I said, yes. And she said, well, the, t the unit next door just sold. Um, he put lipstick on a pig. This is what it sold for. And I said, okay. I said, I'm walking up an appointment. Let me run comps and I'll call you back. And the market had gone up, of course, like I think, you know, prices have gone up across the country. And I said, okay. I said, you now have some equity. Okay, so this is great. So if you want to put it on the market, I'm happy to put it on the market for you. And she said, I don't want to do that. And I said, okay, well, what do you want to do? She goes, I want you to take it over. I want you to do that thing you talked about, which was subject to investing, which is a whole nother, it's a whole nother, you know, it's a course in and of itself, basically. And um, I did. And uh, as I walked through the house, she said, what do you think? And I was thinking of offering her maybe three grand for it because it had some deferred maintenance and needed some work. And uh, she said, what are you thinking? And I said, mm, you know, maybe about three grand. She's like, I was thinking five. And I said, ah, I need to talk to my husband. And I guess I, I would never be good at poker, right? Because she saw the look on my face. And uh, she said, well, Lorraine, what are you thinking? And I was like, I just really need to talk to Rui, my husband. So she goes, let's go outside. And that's when she said to me, no, I'm going to pay you $5,000. And my mouth about hit the floor. I said, I said, what? She said, I want to pay you $5,000 to take over the property. And I just looked at her and I said, what's going on? Like, what's going on in your life? And uh, she just kind of told me what was going on. And being a landlord wasn't her thing. And her main concern was that she did not want to displace her long-term tenant. Hmm. And so I did. I, I took over. I closed uh, right as COVID was starting and kept my fingers crossed that I have a tenant that would keep paying the rent. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, it's a, it's a great example. And as I go through and I look at the book, so you, I mean, you have um, quite a bit in here and I like the way it's laid out. So uh, you have uh, chapter two, assessing your strengths. Chapter one, real estate landscape is changing. Uh, chapter three, uh, start thinking like an investor. I mean, it goes on and on. So, I, I mean, I think it's a great book. I like that you also have um, some, some unique things here. So, like, know your investing personality. Um, mm -hmm. So, obviously, we're not going to have time to go into each and every um, part of the book, which we, if we did have the time, by the way, we wouldn't because I want my audience, to, the readers, so I want them to uh, definitely go in, out and pick up a copy. I went to Amazon and I just typed in your name. comes up really easy and we'll have, um, we'll have the name of the book and everything in the show notes, obviously. But um, tell us a little bit more about that section specifically so know your investing personality. Yeah, so, you know, um, there's all facets of, of, of realtors, real estate agents, right? You have the solo agent that kind of dabbles and maybe has more time than money. Then you have some agents that have these big, big, big mega teams, 10, 20 people on their team. And they love what they do. And, um, you know, they're busy. They're, they're managing a team. 
So because they have a team, they may have the capital to invest, but not the time, right? It's either time or money. That's what things generally come down to. And um, it's it's what is your tolerance level? Or, or you will, are you a risk taker? Are you not a risk, risk taker? Do you want passive income? Do you want to be active in a fix and flip, make a chunk of money, and, you know, you're good? But then that's almost like a commission check. You have to keep doing that over and over and over again. Um, or do you want passive income, right? Or do you want to be a private lender, right? I've got capital. Um, I'm happy to have someone else go do the work, and I'll invest my money with them and make a higher rate of return than what the bank is offering. So there's a, there's a lot of different ways, and I don't think that agents are really aware. No one's ever taught them or explained to them the different ways that they can become involved in real estate investing. That's awesome. Um, so, Lorraine, if somebody – first off, it's been great having you on the show today. Definitely been um, been uh, fun to learn more about your background, why you do what you do, and how you're doing it, really. And this book is just a great, great angle. Like I said, I don't think I've seen a lot, a lot of books on real estate. I don't think I've seen one that speaks specifically to the real estate agent um, and teaching them why they should um, become real estate investors also and and act and, um, and actually uh, instead of just selling homes or, or, or real estate to actually uh, – purchase and invest in it. So I think that's awesome. Um, so that being said, Lorraine, if somebody wants to connect with you and they after this and they want to follow up and learn more about what you're doing in the real estate market or um, learn more about the book, what's the best way, way for people to connect? Um, well, they can follow me on all of my social media. I, I tend to do two videos a week and one of them is specifically geared towards kind of different strategies on Instagram and that's Lorraine Beato. It's Lorraine Beato on LinkedIn, or if they just want to shoot me an email, it's LorraineBeato at gmail.com. Fantastic. Well, Lorraine, definitely been uh, great having you on the show today. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned a lot. If you did, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to be a return uh, listener, return visitor. And uh, Lorraine, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure.